Kathy really quick. Let me send Kamal this one story because I, I saw the story yesterday, Kamal. Um, I think it was Data for Progress po posted this story. And this is about the amount of um, Atlanta voters who want the cop city issue on the ballot this November. Um, overwhelmingly okay. in the majority uh, of the people polled in Atlanta said that they do want the cop city issue to be on the ballot so it's coming to you right now does not have a subject title on it but maybe you could give us a update on that or maybe you have already mm -hmm. updated us on what's the status of of the referendum and the petitions and the verification of the signatures has there been any progress or any movement on that um so there hasn't been any progress on it but you are correct uh, so we, there was a poll that we did, we had internally done. Oh, y'all did it. Damn. Yes. Yes. I don't know. Where, yeah. So yeah, we had the poll internally done and then put out the results of, of the poll to show people again that this issue is still alive and well, and that most people, no matter what they think about whether or not it should be built or should not be built, they want to be able to vote on this issue. Um, and so the poll results, uh, Progress Think Tank Data for Progress released the results of the poll on Monday afternoon. Um, and that uh, they said survey also found that of those numbers, 73% of Democrats, 51% of third party or independent voters, and 18% of Republicans, um, that's nearly 60% wanted to have a vote on whether or not Cop City gets built or not. Um, we had to do this poll, we felt, because again, the mayor, the city council, um, uh, the clerk's office of the city of Atlanta refused to move on putting this on the ballot. They were trying to basically slow walk this into death. Um, and that as they build on the facility, um, that they're trying to change the facts on the ground. Um, and so they're waiting, in my estimation, this is my estimation, that they're basically trying to wait for either a court a, a court order, um, which tries to knock the whole idea of the petition um, uh, uh, to be not something that can be done through the referendum process, or they're trying to wait until um, uh, until they've changed the facts on the ground to whereas even if we were to win, um, uh, the the court itself, even the court said the re this the referendum is a proper place. But because so much resources have been poured in, that they're not going to mm -hmm. allow um, this to be voted that way. So we see this as a as as a way in which they are trying to continually slow down this process and stop it. But again, public opinion um, in the plur in the poll that we did, there's a plurality of people who are still opposed to Cop City, um, and even more important, there's a 60 percent majority, as seen in this poll, that are saying that they want to be able to vote on the proposal before it gets built. Can we look at that Fox Atlanta piece that I sent you? Because I'm curious how the local media handled this information. Do you and want me to play the video? Yes, please. Okay. Let me make sure there might be a little commercial. You know how they do. Yeah. See what happens. There's a little. Mute that jump. Mute that jump. It's about over now. I got, there I got are already calls for Atlanta to put the planned controversial public safety training center to a vote. Dozens of opponents faced off against those who support the project at Atlanta City Hall today. One Atlanta City Councilwoman says she will push for the issue to be put to a vote. Fox News Deidre Dukes is live at Atlanta City Hall with those details now, Deidre. You now, we talked to Councilwoman Keisha Waite. She does believe that ultimately the voters should have the final say on whether that facility should be built. Now, that council meeting is underway at this hour with dozens of people speaking during the public comment portion of the meeting, both those opposed to and in favor of the facility being built. Those opposed do call for a ballot referendum. Atlanta City Councilwoman Keisha Waits and Ileana Bakhtiari are now weighing their next move after city attorneys told them they don't have the legal authority to introduce legislation for a referendum. It's ridiculous. It's a controversial issue on the ballot in November. But I do know that Councilmember Bakhtiari is working uh, on some other language to possibly move this forward today, and uh, I will be supportive of any measures uh, that allow this to go on the ballot. The move comes after Atlanta officials refused to verify thousands of signatures collected by activists trying 
tried to stop the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center, saying organizers had missed the deadline. <gasps> My hopes today is to represent those 116,000 individuals who took the time to sign a petition to be engaged in this process. Count the votes and let it be heard. Supporters and opponents turned out for Monday's council meeting, some urging the council to halt the project. Others voicing their support for the state-of-the-art facility. If that property is going to be cleaned up and turned into a beautiful place. Councilwoman Waits oh, believes Jesus. the process has lacked integrity and transparency from the beginning and is tantamount to voter suppression. It's my feeling that the voters, not the mayor, not the council, should make these decisions when it comes to spending $67 million and making decisions for our government and our city. Now, coming up tonight, all new at five, we sat down for an exclusive interview with both the Atlanta police chief and Atlanta fire chief. What they have to say about this ongoing controversy. Mm, mm, I wonder what they have to say. Right. <laughs> I wonder what they have to say. Has Councilman Keisha always had this position, Kamau? I thought. No, I she's come out particularly strong over the last uh, few weeks. Um, I think she particularly came out strong on after after. Uh, the petition gathering at the very least there um, at the very least, well, let me turn that off at the very least after the petition gathering um, and some of the turnout at city hall, she's been strong in calling for a vote, which uh, provoked the ire of the mayor. And there was actually text messages exchanged, which were made public in which the mayor tried to attack her. And then she came back at the mayor. And since that point, She's been one of the strongest advocates at the very least for having people vote um, on whether or not this gets built. Uh, but we do, but in general, even those who've been up, who've been, uh, let's say, lukewarm on our side in the city council, the three or four folks, they have not been strong. And so that's been part of the problem when as soon as the mayor pushes back or the, the, the again, the, the legal department can give their opinion. It does not mean that the city council has to say that we take that as a law of itself. That is your opinion, but that is not, but that is not necessarily how we need, how we can go forward. A, a, a so-called court could be the next step to battle out after we put it on the ballot. If you're so intent, then, then let's put it on the ballot and then you sue. You openly show that you're going to be, you're going to sue to show that you're against this referendum being on the ballot. Why don't you do that if you're so clear in your, in your politics? So the city council even when it's had opportunities to say, you know what, we're going to just because the city council has the power itself, it doesn't have to count a city a, a single ballot. The city council can put something on the referendum. They can go forth and do that, but they've allowed themselves purposefully, of course, to be used by the mayor or to have excuses as to why they have not gone forth. And so, and lastly, I'll say the whole idea that we we never missed any deadline. We were given an extended deadline by a judge who said that he was recounting or recalculating the days to give us 30 extra days because there was no allowance of having decal residents, which were right next to the facility where it's supposed to be built, allowed to vote. And so they gave us an extra 30 days. When we could not get any precise numbers on how much verified signatures we need from the city. And when we heard that the city intended to use um, a signature method, a signature checking method, and to check every box to make sure that every box was exact, we decided that we want we want to take the extra time that the judge gave us and to move forward and continue to collect signatures. When another when an appellate court said that 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 timeline uh, was now put on hold, then we gave in the signatures. That's when we gave in the signatures. So there is no missing of any dates that ever happened. That is an outright lie and a fabrication. Mm -hmm. The clerk's office can begin counting now. There's nothing preventing them from counting those those signatures and verifying those signatures, just as there's nothing preventing the city council itself from putting this on the ballot and letting people decide. Mm. You should run an email to that reporter and to the editor of that newsroom to make sure that they that that they are aware that that was misreporting and misrepresenting. Um, cause that, that's an important detail. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people, lay people who may not be paying attention to the issue would watch that package and be like, oh, well, the organizers missed the deadline. So that's their fault. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that, that, yeah, you're that, right. that, that, that's a, that's a crucial point that needs to be corrected and acknowledged. No, you're exactly correct. 